Okay, welcome back to Face My Fears. Uh, we're going to get started here in a moment with Crestosaurus run of Legends Arceus. Ar yeah, it's Arceus. Did it right this time. Any percent. Uh, first, I got two donations from last run. We got Aspect, uh, who donated 50. Swear, dar swear jar donation for the swear in my run. Very happy to be able to run for an amazing uh, course, cause, and good luck to the rest of the runners. We appreciate that aspect, and we appreciated your run. Don't sweat the swear word. It's funny. Uh, let's see. We got Green Lightning with $10 for Aspect Swear Jar. Wonderful display of BDSP menu speedrun. Smiley face. Appreciate that, guys. As a reminder, we are raising money for the Able Gamers Foundation. Exclamation point donate in chat to contribute to that. But without further ado, handing it over to Crisis for their run of of Arceus. Take it away. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thank, thank you, Dar. Hello, this is Pokemon Legends Arceus Any% percent, the run where we get sent back all the way in time from ancient, ancient Sinnoh to ancient Sinnoh where our ca task is to collect all... You get the... You get the... You get the idea, but... Anyway, without further ado, I am ready on time. Are we ready to start the run on, on time? I can give a countdown. Yes, sir. Go ahead. All right. Timer in three. Two. Oh, hold on. Hold on one second. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So this is Pokemon Legends Ar Arceus. This is one of the, this is the newest Pokemon game that has been released in early January of this, or late January of this year. And the first thing we're going to do is, you notice that in this game, Mash X, and you'll skip the cutscenes on the first available time. Unfortunately, you can only do this in video cutscenes and not, uh, not, uh, not, not text cutscenes like, like this. Um, so, we just got ourselves isekai all the way on Prelude Beach, the place where I spent nearly most of my entire time here because, well, because I have to, because I reset a lot. There are a lot of tricks in this game, and especially the fact that today I'll be showing a new route which some of you may not know. Over the course of literally last week, we have uh, done new stuff. And explore new and uh, yeah, do new strats and do new stuff. And I'm going to be attempting to show off the majority of what we can do. Of what we can do. So these are the three starters. You, if you know know this run, you may be thinking which starter we're going to pick. And the answer to that question is, we'll tell you in ten minutes' time. We're going to keep at this. We're going to keep at the suspense. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mash through these cutscenes, and then I'm going to go into my into my settings where we're going to be changing two things. We're going to be changing two things in my settings. Technically, this is a waste of time for the most for the early game, but late game it does help. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to go into settings, change my camera sensitivity to five, and Z up button confirmation off. And we're going to attempt the first trick of the day, which is crouch cancelling. So crouch cancelling is a technique that you do where you just crouch and then you go up. It's very simple to do. All you have to do is just press B before you enter a cutscene load. This saves time because if you don't do it, you will get the running stumble animation. Whereas if you're crouching, you'll get instead just immediately just stand up. So it does save about 7.5 seconds every time you get it. However, there is a catch to this. If you get... There is something known as a slow crouch cancel or slow crouch where unfortunately where if you crouch too late you will get the full crouch animation which is really slow to get so if you see me attempting to crouch if you see me attempt to crouch over time you'll understand you'll understand why you'll understand that I'm attempting a crouch cancel sometimes I get it and, and sometimes I don't so right now we are in the t catching tutorial. Uh, this is how the game teaches you how to catch Pokemon. We are going to be attempting the second trick of the run.
and yeah so first thing we're going to do is we're going to catch a cinder quill and then we're going to run close to rowlet but not but not scare it off hopefully this rowlet doesn't go too far and you know goes around and goes everywhere that's not that bad now we're going to be attempting the second trick which is actually really hard to do to time it right and that is breakout skip Unfortunately, I missed the break. I break. I missed breakout skip. Unfortunately, so we're gonna lose a a good amount of time. But we did get fast breakout. So, uh, where are you? There you are. So, what I attempted to do there, which I unfortunately was not able to pull off, was trying to get the breakout animation play while I talk to Professor Laventon, so that when I get out the cutscene, the oh, the Pokemon breakout text then appears immediately afterwards. Unfortunately, I was not able to uh, show that off. So, so yeah, however, we did get f fast breakout, which is where the animation of the Pokeball doesn't play on the Oshawott. So we are going to be losing a little bit of time because of that, but aside from that, we're honestly going to be pretty fine to uh, move on from here. So Professor Laventon asks us if we would help us help us help him complete his Pokedex. As we don't really have much of a choice, uh, we're gonna have to say yes to his request. Now we're gonna get introduced into the main hub of the game, known as Jubilife Village. This is the main area of the game that we're going to be spending most of our downtime in, and it's honestly the greatest place to read out any any donations as it will be essentially during most it's, it's all it's all downtime it's the time of just hold b mash a or the other way around depending on which text box you want to see now we're going to be seeing one of the kind of the most annoying things that they show off here and which is the fact that we it's one of these moving cutscenes where we're just walking we can't run we can't speed it up we just have to walk You really don't do much. You really don't do much here, but because everyone is like, "Who? Who is this? Why are you wearing such weird clothing?" First off, my clothing is great, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what you're on about, but second, but second, oh hello, but sec, but sec, but yeah. Now somehow our phone knows exactly where we have to go, which is uh, interesting. So here I'm going to attempt another crouch cancel. This one is pretty simple to do. And we get it, which is nice. And we get introduced to effectively our rival Akari. And one of the things I'm going to discuss now is uh, gender differences. We did pick the boy because turns out the boy is just by a little bit faster than picking the girl. It's about a uh, for some reason the boy says a little bit more than the girl does. So it saves uh, a couple of it saves a couple of so it saves us like a couple of frames. <laughs> Also, here's a uh, Hisuian Cyrus, by the way. And uh, so, yeah, there's not really much happening here. Basically, we get the rundown of we need a place to stay, and uh, we kind of have nowhere to stay. And so, professors are like, saying maybe we could convince Silene to give us a place to stay. And uh, while we're having food. We're going to, we're basically saying, hey, how we managed to, such. basically our rival does not believe that we managed to catch three Pokemon, which, you know, we did. Fair and square. Not like he's lying or anything. But, yeah, overall, the, the first 15, the first uh, 15 or so minutes, there isn't really much 
going on with it, with going on with this game. There's the catching tutorial, then there's a bunch of text giving us the exposition of where we're going to sleep for tonight. And the only bit of execution that we have here is whether or not we can get crouch cancels. Crouch cancelling is effectively the most uh, important thing to do. Because that saves us the m most amount of time. I think I saw the bit where apparently the stream just, you know, was, you know, just a bunch of text and code. I mean, to be fair, Arceus does have the power to uh, do anything. He sent us back in time. I'm pretty sure he can, like, alter the stream. So here's another crouch cancel. And here's the example of a slow crouch cancel that I managed to get. So, unfortunately, we do get one. Slow crouch cancels take too, so long, unfortunately. So, <laughs> five. Point four seconds behind, but that's fine. I'm not. Exp if this PBs, I will be impressed. But I don't think it will. But I don't think it will PB. But it's fine. I'm not here for PB. I'm here to showcase this game. Hey. But yeah, this game is definitely more of a movement-based Pokemon game. In terms of the number of fights, I'm pretty sure there's less than 20 fights that you do in the entire game, and at least seven of them we lose on purpose. We'll get to we'll get to the fights when we get to the fights. Right now, we are going to be heading into our first visit of the Galaxy Headquarters. The basically every time we need to get a new mission, we're basically coming in here and getting ourselves a new missions. Here has, a, in terms of law, three different divisions. The Survey Corps, Survey Corps, Security Corps, actually there's four, Health Corps and Construction Corps. We're going to be attempting to be part of the Survey Corps because if not, if we don't, because if we're not, then we have no place to stay and we're just going to be sent out to die. Nope, I'm not making that one up. So basically, in order to be part of the, quote, Survey Corps, we need to catch three of the following Pokemon. Bidoof, Starly, and a Shinx. Out of those three, two of them are actually going to become mainstays in our party. Whereas the other, whereas the other one, unfortunately, isn't quite good enough for late game. You could probably guess which one's which. Anyway, time for our second mission, not first. First mission is technically uh, just starting in the game. Uh, this is where we finally get our starters. Now, if you see normal ones, we would normally pick Oshawott. However, with new strats, we are not picking Oshawott today. Instead, we are going to be picking Cinderquill. I'll explain the route differences between the two. I'll explain the, the route differences between the two of Cyndaquil and Oshawa as we go on. Because they do have different strats, especially early on, what we do with between the two. But... This is actually a very new thing that the Japanese runners have been doing for quite some time, actually. They're, they'd be picking Cyndaquil over Oshawa. Because well, well, we'll we'll explain we'll explain when we uh, get to the other part of Obsidian. Right now, we are tasked to grab the Pokemon, so we're going to be heading out of this door, and we're going to be running to the gate to get out of here. We're going to attempt to move the camera just before. There we go. Bit of a weird movement, but it's fine. And here I'm going to be attempting enough not crouching, another crouch cancel, and we're going to be. We're going to be seeing not the final boss of this game, not the not the secret plot tw plot twist villain of this game. He is definitely not the bad guy. Well, for this run, he's not, but for our other run, he might not be the good guy. Here, here's, here's Volo. 
Basically, he's going to be challenging us to a fight. And uh, I want to talk about a little bit about this fight. The fight in itself is simple. We just quick, we press quick attack three times, we win. There is actually a way to get this fight to be faster. One way this fight can be faster is get the legendary two turn fight. And the only way that can happen is if we quit twice, which we don't. The other way that this fight can actually be faster is if we lose this fight. The problem is that we can't force a lose of this fight, but we can, um, we can't force to lose this fight because we only have, we only have a quick attack. However, because of my speed stat, we were able to actually get two quick attacks in one, in, before he got another tackle, which is actually really nice. It depends on our Syndical speed stat, whether or not we get two quick attacks in one go. But, and we were lucky enough to actually get good speed. Uh, how Oshuot does this, Oshuot does the same thing with tackle. But, you, Oshuot can't go for the lose play because Oshuot's significantly more bulky than Syndical. Surprisingly. Anyway. Now we get into what many people call Obsidian Zero, or just the extension of the tutorial. This is where we are catching the three Pokemon as we just mentioned. One of them can be a bit annoying to catch sometimes. One of them and the other two can be pretty fine to catch. So let's see if I get another Crouch Cancel here. This one's pretty easy to get. There we go. So, welcome to Aspiration Hill, and welcome to, effectively, the time where we are almost gaming. Almost. The game still needs to teach you a few more things. So here's our first Pokemon that we're going to catch for this run, and that is Bidoof. Bidoof is fine, you just pretty much... This is how the game teaches you about the different types of Pokemon in this game. There's Bidoof, which is completely oblivious and completely fine to what you do. So I'm going to just chuck a pole and just grab this Apricorn while I can. And then the second Pokemon we're going to catch is Starly. Starly is a timid Pokemon and is afraid of you. So naturally, the game tells you to... Oh, nice spoil. The game tells you to, to you know, hide in the bush. And we're doing not and we're not doing that. Something that I do and only I do specifically is I just run to it and don't and don't and don't really care. The idea of not needing to the idea is that you want there's many ways on I oh what camera? Okay. So the idea of uh of start of this of this game, which we'll get to in a minute, is you want to complete but But there is a there is certain things you can do with Starlies and other Pokemon that you that you can do, but it's better explained a little bit late a little bit later. Here's how she's telling us to get us berries from this tree. We're gonna skip that because it's kinda slow. And we can get but we can get berries later. We are gonna need a lot of berries, and in fact this is the one of the few games that actually purposely buys berries, I think. Like, like other games don't need to buy berries. This don't ever buy berries, and I don't even think you even can buy berries. This one you definitely want to buy berries. I suppose Let's Go is like the only exception. So here's Shinx. This this fight this is technically a fight, and it can go in multiple different ways. But we really we won't be to catch this Shinx. And we're hoping to see quick attacks. There's one. That's nice. Are you gonna show me a second one? No, that's fine. So I have to keep also keep in mind of this Shinx Gen. How this game handles its completion, how how this handles its completion. But in terms of plot, 
we were able to successfully very easily catch three Pokemon where everyone else couldn't. And... Yeah. And we're going to have apparently the technology to take a photograph in this time era. And... Go back, tell Celine the good news. Celine, Celine, I don't really know how to pronounce that one. The good news, and go back and um, effectively be part of the Survey Corps. Also, by the way, for those of you who don't know, my Vat Volo was now a gold. Oh yeah, I guess Let's Go is the only one where you want to use berries, but you don't buy orange berries in Let's Go. You buy at least 50 orange berries in this game. And yeah, that's also another thing about way different about this game. Up, oh, I have to move forward and crash. Yeah, that crash cancel wasn't that great. But yeah, in this. So now we finally passed the trial and we're now part of the Survey Corps, which means we're not going to be let out to die. Oh, you buy berries and get Urshifu. Interesting. Didn't, did not know that. So now we're going to go and effectively go to our home and get dressed because that's because and get dressed to the uniform, which is going to be our clothing for the rest of the day. For the rest of the run. Oh, that's, so this is pretty simple. You just press R, the, the R button multiple times, and then there you go. This is going to be our uniform for the rest of the run. Hope you enjoy this clothing style. So now that we come back in, we're going to receive a traditional hat, which basically makes us look like the main character from, you know, the original DPP. It's like, here, references, reference, it's the hat. All it's missing is a letter M and we can... We don't have dodge is... Sprint up, then don't sprint when you're turning around, and then sprint up again, and then... Duck, and then... Crouch just before you enter the cutscene, because, you know, crouch cancelling. It's one of the best and worst things to be introduced into this game. Because... Well, if you get it, it saves a lot of time, but if you get the slow version, it will, um... Shall we? Anyway, apparently we're going to be uh, challenging our commander to a sumo wrestling fight and we just get tossed. Because yes, throwing children in this game is a good thing. I know we're a teenager, but that's still a child. So yeah, we just got yeeted across the room by this grown adult who thinks, Oh, this is a child from the sky. Let's yeet him. Anyway, we're almost finishing in the tutorial section where we get one final thing to do, which is we learn how to craft. Crafting is very simple in this game. All you have to do is just get the resources and then you get to craft stuff. Surprisingly, initially we thought we were only going to craft like balls. Turns out we're going to craft more. We're going to actually craft more than just balls. We're going to craft. Um some really useful items, which we'll, we'll, we'll get to when we get there. Unfortunately, we don't get those useful items early game, which would be really nice if we did, actually. At least one of them would be nice to show off. So... But yeah, crafting can be done anywhere, but crafting is preferably preferred to do on the crafting table because that's technically slightly faster. Also, you just saw me miss a crouch cancel. That's the animation that we're trying to uh, avoid having every time we go to, every time we enter a cutscene. 
Let's make sure we craft the max Pokeballs here because we definitely need a lot of Pokeballs, especially for the beginning er area. The idea is we craft them, we buy some, and then we never have to craft or buy any more Pokeballs ever again. Well, not ever again. Because we are going to buy more Pokeballs later, but... This should last until the second area of the game. Also, has a fun fact, we are 0.3 seconds faster than my PB, so that's uh, nice, but we're about to basically lose a bunch of time here. Because this is where the route difference becomes from Cyndaquil to Oshawa gets uh, noticeable. So, you'll see that despite when we get to the when we get to back to obsidian so this is technically considered obsidian one because we're we're gonna how depending on which starter you pick and depending on which strat you're doing you're going to be doing different things so with oshiwat you would actually catch the pokemon yeah this is technically pb pace but i this is not it's not truly indicative this is where variance now starts to come in. So, first off, we're going to learn how to dodge roll. We can't swim in this game, but we can do that. I would like to know someone who can do that, but can't swim in real life. Because I can't dodge roll, and, uh, but I can swim, but, uh, but whatever. Anyway, you're going to be noticing something a little bit weird. So I'm going to be running towards Ak Akari, which is what both Cyndaquil and Oshawa would normally do. Um, but you're going to be noticing that I'm not going to actually be catching any of these Pokemon that we see here. In fact, I'm going to be skipping them. Oshawa would catch all the Pokemon that they would see here. Cyndaquil doesn't. Cynd I'm just going to run by these Bidoofs. I don't have to catch you. And, yeah. This is because of what we're going to be doing slightly different. Oshawott will go around, try and catch as many Pokemon around. Cyndaquil actually wants to skip uh, skip these and head straight this way and catch two Wumple immediately. This is because we have two empty party slots and we want to fulfill them with Wumples. Oh, why are you... Uh, you're too far away, I'm not going to get you. That might be a risk, but I'm going to take that risk. So we catch this one, but hopefully it stays in. It doesn't, that's fine, we can come back and catch it. Effectively, we want to leave here. We want to warp back with two Wumples. And that's important because we're going to be evolving those Wumples. Those Wumples are going to give us, well, an RN well, RNG Pokemon, and hopefully we get the right one. We love RNG. So you need to stay in the ball, please. You're actually very important to stay, please. That should stay. Good. So, now that we have two Wumples, and we basically got everything that we need to do, including go past these waypoints, we can now start to warp back. We can warp back and actually go, instead of forward, we're going right. And the reason why is that we're going to be fighting Pokemon that are 10 levels above us. Oops, that's the wrong button to press. And that, the reason why we're doing that is so that we can get a big experience boost. So we're going to come this way. We're going to dodge roll here, dodge roll here. Uh, do this because apparently it makes climbing up much easier. Get this because we need some some crafting material for later. And hopefully we find a female Shinx. You're male. I hope you like, guys like that trick shot that I did. And we did catch a female Shinx. That's really good. We need a female Shinx. I'll explain why we need a female Shinx when it comes to points. But here we're going to try and go this way. We're hoping to see a Silcoon here. No Silcoons here. And we're also hoping to see a Pichu. Hopefully. 
And we don't see either of them, which is fine. We also caught three Wump, which is what I need. Oh, I need that. Thank you. And now it's time for us to fight some Butterfreeze. The Butterfreeze, Beautifly. What am I on about? Butterfreeze is not in this game. So what we do is we basically throw it the back, throw it back in the back, and basically what we do is, is oops, is we check the order. Oh, that's the wrong button to use. That's the wrong move to use. Oops. It'll be fine. It'll be, we'll be fine. So we go quick attack into M. The quick attack was a mistake, but it's fine. We get the burn, which is kind of okay. And it doesn't move again. Nice. So we beat that up. Now we move on to the second butterfly. We need to do this three times. We need to do this three times. And then, so we use Ember, but then this time we're actually not going to be using Ember again. We're going to be using Rollout because of points. Unfortunately, we missed one, but that's fine. We take some damage, but... Oh, no. Oh, no. Please hit. That should still kill, right? Yeah, okay, good. That was about to be bad, but it was fine. And now we need to find the third butterfly, which is right here. Not sure why you're so far away. And then we go ahead and then use Ember again. And then use Rollout. We missed again. Lovely. We love missing moves, don't we? Nope, we're gonna have to... I... I could... Take... I could... That's... That's really unfortunate. And we get paralyzed. Okay, so I'm gonna run away. Oh, that's bad. Uh... Interesting. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to fix that somehow. We did see a stun spore, so it's not the end of the world. But unfortunately, we can't evolve the... the Cyndaquil. So... That's fun. Now we have to learn how to do a... How to think how to think things through now. Lovely. Okay. Don't worry, I have plans. I have a plan I have plans to fix things. But first off, we're gonna check whether or not we get Wumples. That's really good to see. If this becomes a Silcoon, we should be for us. Oh, wait, did I see the evolve on Cyndaquil? Or did it just not show up when I first went to it? So yeah, unfortunately, this is where luck gets in. Double Cascoon's fine. So I can just do this. Uh, not that. Want to see my Pokemon. And then I'm going to put... Wampo over in one of the Cascoons. And I'm going to put Shinx. Actually, no, I don't need to do Shinx. I don't need to do that. And then, and then, hopefully we should have enough, We hopefully we should have enough points. So, this is not what was supposed to happen. But I guess we're going to have to adapt. This should still be enough points. Also, I forgot to buy Pokeballs, but we're going to be fine on Pokeballs anyway. Let's see. Okay, we just got enough points, so it's fine. We're fine. This is not ideal of how it's supposed to go, but... Well, stuff happens sometimes, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. What was supposed to happen is we get another rollout. We then knock out the, butterf the butterfly. And then... We then, um... Go on, but it's but it's fine. We do have a uh, backup plans for it. We did get double Silcoon, double Cascoon, which is actually really good. So it's not like the end of the world. So it's like we got lucky, but we also got unlucky for missing those moves. So it means that we have to take a slower Pikachu fight, unfortunately. 
But this does mean that we are guaranteed to now finish Shinx, which is nice. So, let me explain how this game works. So, as you may notice, every time we catch Pokemon and we register Pokemon and we do attacks, it registers Pokemon in our moves in the Pokedex. In order, so how this, to get to the end game, we need to collect enough points so that we can leave. So that we can then enter the final area. So here in the beginning, I had to make sure that I had at least 500 points and I was kind of worried that we wouldn't because my syndical didn't evolve yet. But luckily that wasn't necessary and we just were able to get 500 points. Normally we'd leave here with about 700 to 900 points. But we but it's fine. But it's fine. So normally if we had a Quilava, we would just flame wheel the Pikachu and end it in one hit, in one turn. Unfortunately, we can't do that. So instead, we're going to be doing a different strat. And it's actually an old strat. That we used to do. When, with Oshiwat. So I guess I'm showing a little bit of Oshiwat strats. Right now. So what we would normally do is if we had a Quilava... We would use Quilava to. We would use Quilava to just flame wheel and the Pikachu would be knocked out in one hit. Unfortunately, we can't do that. So instead, we're gonna wait, have his Pikachu quick attack us. And then we're gonna agile quick attack into quick attack, and that finishes Shinx. So unfortunately, we had to take this fight kinda slow. But this means that we've guaranteed done Shinx. This is also another fight that we could lose, but it's actually not that fast to lose on purpose. My only concern is that I don't think I may have enough EXP to evolve my Shinx before the, before the fight coming up. Which is uh, kind of bad. So, you get to, so yeah, basically you get to see me trying to adapt things along the way, but at least I'm glad to say that Shinx is now, well, once it evolves, it's now done. In terms of uh, Pokedex completion. So, what we used to do, so another thing that used to be different is that we used to teach moves to our Shinx here. But since we're higher leveled, we don't actually have to teach the moves here. Which would waste some time. Also, I want to mention, this scene here is actually really good foreshadowing. So, the only thing I'm a little concerned... Yeah, I... This is not really my... Yeah, so yeah, this is a... Uh, so yeah, in terms of early game, this isn't exactly great. I wish this could be a lot better. But it's fine. Here we're just gonna catch some Bidoofs. Get at least three so we can get some nice bonuses of Bidoof. Depending on how many heavies we get, which we did get one, we could argue to finish Bidoof as well. Oh yeah, we don't care about not being seen for Bidoof. Uh, can Shinx evolve? Oh no. Shinx not being able to evolve is actually really bad. Uh, this is, uh... Not exactly... Uh... What do I do here? I guess I have to lead Shinx. Oh boy. So, this is where, this is where the run kind of goes a little bit downhill, because... Because we didn't knock out that third Butterfree... With Butterfree, Beautifly. Unfortunately, we're kind of lower on experience than I would like to be. I have ways to rectify this later. But for right now, we're just going to have to go into Shinx and uh, not risk 95% accurate moves. 
Well, after we do this bike. Because apparently we don't have Thunderfang yet. So that's fun as well. So yeah, even more slower fights, which is lovely. Because normally, if we had the EXP, we would be a Luxio by now. And with Luxio... And with Luxio, we would be able to double Thunder Thang and basically get this part over if. But unfortunately, we're kind of low on ex EXP, which is uh, not very good. The run is salvageable, it's just in a very awkward state right now. So that's unfortunate. So we're actually meeting one of the first ever Diamond Clan, one of the first ever Wardens, being Warden Mai. We challenged her Munchlax, and basically she's asking us to effectively get rid of a pet, an alpha pest that exists on the top. Personally, I don't think the alpha that lives on the top of his mountain is a pest, but you know, I'm not the one to dis I'm not the one to decide. So here's our next Pokemon that we're going to complete, and that is Cricketune. So our job for Cricketune is being is feed two and then catch three unseen. So there's one. Starly, we don't really care too much about. We get another spoil apricorn, which is really nice. And then if that one stays in, like a good boy, we can just run up and catch this one. Okay, luckily the Cyndaquil and the Shinx can evolve now. We also want to catch this Geodude if we can. We unfortunately angered it, so it's fine. We angered both of these. Geodude is something that we are going to complete, just not now. So keep that in mind. We are going to be completing Geodudes. Oh, that's the second style right there. Nope. That Geodude also got angry, but that's fine. So here, I wouldn't evolve any of my stuff here, because why would I need to? But because we need the Quilava here, we're going to evolve... My Cyndaquil, my Wumpel, and my Shinx. So this completes Shinx and starts Quilava, and by the time we're done with this fight, Quilava shall also be done with its Pokedex research. And with all this Wumpel. Which we get a Silcoon, which is really nice, actually. If we catch one, we can also complete Cascoon and Silcoon, which is really nice. And then evolve this Shinx. This definitely means I can try a different strategy with Psyduck, because we need to get Thunder Thangs off. And then, so... So, now we're going to be introduced to a new... Yeah, so, the Wurmple Lottery was really nice today. So, at least the bad luck with missing rollouts is at least somewhat uh, done better with the Wurmple Lottery. So, at least we have two things that cancel out. So now we just need to keep this Silcoon in our party until it's ready to evolve into a Beautifly. And as long as we see another Silcoon, we can actually complete both Silcoon and Cascoon and then skip stuff later on, which is nice. Right here, we got introduced to our first Alpha, and that is Alpha Cricketune. We're going to be interacting with five different Alphas in this run. Unfortunately, due to the many mistakes, we are losing time here. But it's fine.
if this game, if this run somehow PBs. Also, we were supposed to Agile Ember first, so hopefully we don't get punished for that. We don't. But it's fine, we don't get punished. But I I clicked the wrong one, but we're fine. We're supposed to Agile Ember into Strong Ember into in that fight. But luckily, we don't have to do that. But luckily, we were not punished for that, for my mistake. So yes, this now finishes Koalava. Koalava will be used for one more fight, and then we're going to be saying goodbye to it, unfortunately. Koalava, you've served your purpose, but now it's time to be off. I can talk a little bit here about Oshuot strats. So, in the Pikachu fight, you saw what Oshu what Shinx would normally do against... Um, against uh against pikachu except the pikachu the shinx would actually be level nine and not the level that we are at in terms of the munchlax fight our munchlax fight it was a four turn fight because unfortunately we got unlucky with you know a, a certain butterfly however despite that how that fight would normally go is you would use luxio thunder thang twice into a bite and how would this fight would go normally is you would use ember two times you would use ember two times one agile one strong in that order unfortunately i was not paying attention too much and accidentally clicked the wrong the wrong order so on average i would say that this uh Obsidian Fieldland is pretty bad. But aside from that, aside from that, I this is still a pretty decent showcase of uh, what this run has to offer. What, what this run has to offer, at least for the very beginning. And I hope everyone here is uh, in, enjoying. And this is for this downtime if we have any donations. Now is probably a great time to read them. Let's see. Let me refresh here. Uh, no donations right now, but as a reminder, we are raising money for the Able Gamers Foundation. They work hard with a panel of <laughs> community members in the gaming community who have disabilities. And their goal is to increase the accessibility in gaming across the board and increase the quality of life for people living with disabilities. Uh, working with manufacturers to develop hardware that makes playing video games more accessible uh, for people with disabilities. And we uh, were really happy to have found this charity. We, we were trying to uh, find an organization that benefited um, people with disabilities this month. And they uh, we were really impressed by their cause. So just remember to get those donations in, exclamation point, donate. Exclamation point, donate tray. Exclamation point, donate. There we go. So yeah, nice. get those in. Benefit the Able Gamers Foundation. Yeah, we just got now introduced to, effectively, the heads of the Diamond and Pearl Clan. You could say that one of them is a waste of time and the other one's a waste of space. <laughs> I will leave. I will leave. I'll, 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 I'll be quiet Don't now. Don't make me mute Discord on stream. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that was good. I like that. <laughs> Especially for a speedrun case. What is def they're both definitely kind of slow because they love talking to you about their pro about their pro about their problems especially the fact that one of the noble pokemon is currently going on a rampage ah i've been waiting to use that one i'm sorry uh so so yeah obviously you can guess um uh, one of them is a uh, one of them is the leader of the pearl clan the other is the leader of the diamond clan they'll basically be Throughout our journey, basically interrupting us everywhere, every in most ways possible, because they keep on having a problems where some of their noble Pokemon, their Pokemon sacred to Arceus, 
is going on a mad frenzy, and the first one we have to deal with is Cleavor. One of the new evolutions and one of the new Pokemon and a new evolution to Scyther. So 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 yeah, our job is to go in and do a research. To go ahead and research Cleavor to see whether or not he's a uh, whether or not yeah, he is uh whether or not we can do anything about that. Also, fun fact, it is actually faster to warp, or I like to imagine, jump out the window to crash on the front gate and then go back in. So yeah. If you're ever wondering what is the fastest way to go downstairs, it is not to go downstairs, it is to jump out the window. Don't actually do that, please. Because we don't have warp technology. It's weird, it's like the only time where the game tells you you actually have to physically go down. Every other time, the game warps you here by, by automatically. This is the only time where it doesn't. Yes, yes, the, pro the protagonist in this game can jump out of a third floor window, but can't swim. Just, just keep that in mind. <laughs> It's one of the weird anomalies, so... Here's where we're going to start doing some new stuff. So, some some other Pokémon. Not new stuff, per se, in terms of Pokémon, but... Well, we're going to gain some new Pokémon, that's what I'm trying to say. However, because of a certain mistake that I did, I'm going to do them in a slightly different way that I would normally would do. Which means... I'm going to need to open up a research calculator. Uh... So I need to open up Psyduck. Psyduck's research because we need to uh, fix some stuff. Uh, okay. Oops, that's what I wanted to do. Want to go to the right place so we don't waste too much time. And because I didn't forgot to do this earlier, I am going to talk to this guy, do some shopping, and then buy 31 Pokeballs. I forgot to do that earlier, but we can just do it now. Anyway, Psyduck, defeat with electric moves three. Okay. So we have plans to f fix Luxio. Because Luxio is supposed to... Actually, this is really good, have, seeing a shaking Pokemon. Because this means I only have to catch a uh, three. It was shaky. Why didn't the Pokemon come out? Interesting. I never had that one before. That happened before. I actually wanted the Pokemon to come out there. Because, well, because of Geodude research points, but it's fine. Uh, you're a Cricketot and you're a Cricketot, so I don't need either of you. Here, Pichu and Cricketune can spawn, and it's actually beneficial if either of them spawns. Uh, I'm not quite sure how many Starlies I've caught in total, so I'm just going to catch you just to check. Here's Babarrel, and here's a Badoof. We caught six. I actually want to grab this, because I want to see a Geodude pop out. I guess I must be too far away for Geodude to pop out. I didn't realize you can do that. Oh well, that's fine. We have different ways to beat complete Geodude. Actually, more bib arrows just to guess. So here's another alpha that we kind of interact with. We do throw a Pokeball, but we expect it not to catch. Unless it catches this run. What? Okay. <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. Uh, okay, we caught the Alpha b Barrel. I thought that could never actually happen. But, uh, apparently, it can. <laughs> so this run is kind of weird when it comes to luck, so right now we're doing Baneary tasks. Wait, did you just throw a ball at it just for the heck of it? No, we normally throw the ball because if we're too close, it aggro's on us. But it has oh, a chance of catching. But it has a chance of catching, and I managed to get the rare catch. Is that four? That's, That's insane. Four. The fact that that happened in a marathon run is 
dumbfounding. So we want one bunny to stay in? Marathon luck. Anything can happen. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I had some marathon luck and some bad luck in this run, which is really weird. Well, that that that's marathon luck, right? It's so both I want this Silcoon in because this Silcoon would be really nice to stay in. So how do we finish Psyduck? Uh, if we catch one, catch three, because... So, Psyduck I have to finish slightly differently because of a certain thing that happened, unfortunately, earlier on, where now I have to Thunderfang three ducks instead of one just to fix Luxio. So, that's fine. So unfortunately, this duck is about, you're about to see a duck get eviscerated. So if you don't want to see a Psyduck get eviscerated, uh, look away. Well, I'll do it for you. So the fact that we were able to catch three ducks is, my, the, the fact that we caught that alpha was mind boggling. I thought you could, it's like, I always, I knew the chances of catching the alpha was like, uh, was kind of low, but I didn't real, but I didn't realize it could actually happen. Well, I guess I learned today that you can actually catch the alpha. Also, here's Liam, by the way, the, uh, not Liam, Lian. It's kind of a weird name for shows, but it's fine. Uh, simple, simple fight, you just bite twice and you win. Uh, we would like to see Acid Spray because technically it's a fast animation, but it's fine. And that's Gumi defeated. And that's a split. And we are now in a weird spot. We're tied with PB, but we still have to do some things that PB wouldn't have to do. So, interesting. So, he's uh, Cleavor's Warden. And he's kind of like upset because his Cleaver is now acting really mad, and really strange. But don't worry, we're here to cheer him up. We are here to uh, cheer him. Now, ideally, ideally here, this is one of the places where I preferably want to rank up. Rank up in points here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going when I walk back, I'm actually going to evolve my Silcoon into a Beautifly. This not only completes Silcoon, but starts off Beautifly. And because we've done so many tasks of Beautifly, we now finally get the point of Beautifly. Because remember, earlier on we attacked Beautifly multiple times. We only get those benefits. Once we want, once we actually have the Pokemon caught, that's not the button. So here we want to move the Beautify out, and we want to put a high level Starly in our party because we need that to evolve. Because we need to evolve another Starly to finish Starly. The only thing I want to check here on my research is Beautify points because we kind of messed up a little bit. So, it's rank 7. Okay, that's good. Well, at least I can tell now the world record holder that catching a barrel is actually possible. Not use well, It's kind of useful because you get 10 extra points, and considering the fact that I may evolve this Bidoof, that's in my party, we may actually go, we might actually do it. So how I judge whether or not a Pokemon is good or not to do is based on how fast can you complete the tasks and also how not RNG dependent the tasks are. So Bidoof is in an interesting spot where if I'm able to catch two more, I don't mind evolving this Bidoof into a Babaro and actually using it in a fight later on. So I have a tracker on what Pokemon I have done and what Pokemon I have not done. A tracker is not, you know, it's kind of, it's it's not really like a let's go tracker where it's like you call the Pokemon, that's it, you're done, move on to the next one. In this game, you have to keep all the other things involved. So my tracker works in a way 
where some Pokemon I have marked off as going to complete, and some Pokemon have already been marked off as fully complete. And some Pokemon haven't started yet, but that's fine. And then we want to warp to front gate. And now we finally get the fa a fast mode of transportation. And I think for my sake, I'm going to change my split comparison from personal best to average. Actually, average is worse than the early game. Hold on. It's actually even more strict than the early game. Hold on, go back to PB. Never mind. So yeah, now things are starting to at least normalize a little bit, except for Luxio. Luxio is still kind of behind a little bit, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. But things are now starting to uh, normal normalize a little bit for our Pokemon. For our Pokemon, we're starting to finally get back to normal place. Normally, if this if the run was kind of normalized, I would be I would be behind Oshiwat, but then at this point, I'd start to be kind of ahead of Oshiwat. But right now, we're kind of stuck in a right now we're behind because of the multiple different mistakes and slower fights that I had to do, and also fixing some mistakes that I've done. So yeah, now we finally have fast mode, which is weedier. What we're now going to do is we're now going to go down here. We're going to still grab this because we need some black tubblestone for later. Here, I'm going to have a quick check. There's a cricket and a cricket tune. That's really nice to see. That's my last orange berry, but luckily I don't need it. Luckily, we're going to be doing some shopping for orange berries later. Oh, no, you saw me and you didn't eat the berry. That's fine. As long as you stay in, you don't. That's fine. Uh, any more Bidoofs around here? No. Ah, good. We caught six. So Bidoof should be at rank eight now. It's definitely at rank eight. Which means we can we are actually going to evolve this Bidoof that's in our party. I'm also checking for any shaking ores around here. Because any shaking ores allows us to finish Geodude early. Oh, it's raining. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Because we need to use fire moves. Oops. So unfortunately, it's now raining, which is uh, not ideal. And the reason why it's not ideal is that we tr try to use uh, fire in rain, and you understand why. Weather has changed a little bit in this game. But the part that still remains for us is that water still, do still does less damage for water moves, which is kind of unfortunate. So let's see how much damage this Ember does. Ah! I think we're going to be fine. I can just strong Ember and that should kill, actually. So we have to waste a little bit of time here. Doing... Because we don't here, we would rather just do two embers, but unfortunately, because of the rain, we kind of have to do it a little bit in a different way. So now all of our Pokemon can evolve. However, we are purposely not evolving Cascoon. The reason why we don't want to evolve Cascoon is because Dust Tox gets points if it's caught at night, and if you evolve it at night, you get those points. So that's why we're actually waiting until we actually get nighttime, in which we are going to be forcing nighttime when we get to the next area. Anyway, here's the first of five boss fights where the notes just say uh, dodge and uh, dodge and throw. So I hope you're good. At, I hope people are good at throwing, because this is what we're basically just doing. The fast way to do this fight. There is a fast way. Also, there's no rain when there's no weather effects when you do this fight, which is funny. So here, we're going to throw, we're going to then walk back. 
and then come back in, and then if we're just, like, in its face, like, right here, it can't hit us. So we can't- ooh. Ah, bit too out of- bit too in- bit too close to it. This is unfor- that's unfortunate. So let's see if I can hit the in. So we're gonna come in, and unfortunately we get hit again. So it's kind of finicky where you have to stand to not get hit. And unfortunately I got hit again by that, which is really unfortunate. So this is unfortunately a kind of a slow cleaver. Which might make me die. Uh-oh, I don't want to die here. That'll be embarrassing. That's fine, we're not going to die here. That was close. That, that was kind of a bad cleaver fight, but, you know. I showed off what I was trying to do, which is trying to go in, hit it in the face, and then come back out. And now, before we leave, we're going to evolve our Starly and our Bib Barrel. And I'm actually going to do this right now. And I'm going to teach Bib Barrel a water move, which for some reason it does not know when it levels up. The only reason why I'm okay doing this is because since I caught six Bidoofs, and two of them are heavy, that means Bidoof is rank 8, which means when I evolve this Bib Barrel, Bid Bidoof, the Barrel will be then done, which allows me to skip certain other Pokemon later on. So yeah, this early game, at least in my department, is pretty atrocious, but hey, we're, hey, according to my predicted time, we're still going to be 20 minutes underneath PB. Oh, not PB, under below, below estimate, so that's fun. Anyway, here's Starly. Here's the second Starly evolution. That now finishes Starly and basically means that Staravia just needs to do a certain attack later on. And I'm just going to do this now because I tend to forget. Evolve Bidoof into a Babaro. So we're actually going to see Babaro for a fight. Normally, depending on points, we would actually use Psyduck instead. And use Psyduck's water move instead. So here we're going to change moves because I tend to forget. Uh, over rollout, we don't need that. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to go here, want to see my Pokemon. We're going to get this level 3 Shinx and deposit the rest of my party. So now we basically deposited my enti entire party and just having a Shinx. Why? Because remember, not every fight you have to win. And the next, fi and the next two fights, we don't actually have to. So, we, this is the literal definition of throwing. Don't worry, we are throwing the fights to go fast. But right now, we're basically saying, hey, we've done day one. So basically, here comes another three to three minutes of effectively just uh, null time. So this game kind of has, kind of goes from you're in the action, you're out of the action. You're in the action, and you're out of the action because you kind of have to go all the way to the top, all the way from the bottom floor to the top floor to a portal commander that everything is fine and nothing is uh, going bad. So if we have don't, if we have uh, don't, I mean, I'm gonna say this again. If we have any donations, this will be a perfect time to read them out. Uh. Nope, once again, just raising money for Able Gamers. Um, exclamation point, not... Ex talking. Yes, talking. Exclamation point, donate. Not exclamation point, donate tray, like I typed out earlier. D-O-N-E. We did it. Yes. Also, I'll, I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about this character. So, this is not done in any percent, but it is done in... Uh, catch them all, where you go ahead and go and around and catch all the, uh, not catch, but collect all 107 
uh, well, actually 108, but all 108 uh, wisps. However, I like to point out the name of this, of this child known as Vesa. I think it is very funny, considering where you find the last, the last wisp. If you don't know the, the, the thing they were trying to go for, it's Vessel. The word for Vessel. Uh, I'm just going to save a spoiler. The, the kid's the final spirit. The, the kid is the final uh, wisp that you have to get. I thought that was a really neat, really neat name choice that they, that they, they made. Also, technically, you could, if you wanted to, have your cascoons here. And evolve them now, but there is actually a gimmick in the in this um, in this uh, game for some reason, where if your Pokemon can evolve but you choose not to, if if a Pokemon can evolve but you choose not to, uh, oh, I need notes for I need uh, notes for this. I think I'm nervous. So I forgot. I, I I had a train of thought and I and I forgot what it was. Uh, what was the train of thought again? Oh yeah, Cascoon. You could evolve, but basically, there's a gimmick in this game where if you have a Pokemon and you choose not to evolve it, it gets 20% extra EXP. And we tend to use that a little bit here and there, not too often. So here's the other shop in the game where we're going to be buying uh, 11 of you, 4 of you, and we're also going to be buying 31 Orange Berries. We'll explain all this in just a moment. So the Oran Berries, we've seen it used before, but there are a lot of Pokemon that we're going to be feeding. And, well, and so we want to buy as many Oran Berries as we possibly can so you can feed, you know, a lot more Pokemon. And so our first shop will be about 30-ish Oran Berries, and then our second shop will then be a little bit, will be then more will then be more on berries as for the hot berries and the bug warts we're going to be crafting an item that effectively no one has used in their playthrough and i and i can probably guarantee that no one's using their playthrough and that is stealth spray stealth spray is actually a really really powerful item in this game so for those of you who don't know also this fight Optimally, the Mime Jr. goes for... Optimally, the Mime Jr. just goes for Zen Headbutt and kills us. Doesn't always happen. But, you know, simple fight. We just want to throw, if we can. Please. We get hypnosis. Yeah, unfortunately, this Mime Jr. only has one attacking move. Uh, but we get the uh, second turn, which is, you know, fine. So yeah, Stealth Spray is really useful, especially when it comes to tasks of trying to catch Pokemon without being seen. This is especially useful for the Cricketunes that will be coming up shortly later. Shortly later, Oop, we want to go here. So yeah, no one has really used. I don't. I have not used them in my casual playthrough, but it is something that you can and should be using here. So. Here, you still, we still have the Shinx, and we did say that we're going to be throwing a second fight. The first fight was Rival, and the second fight is going to be Volo. Yes, Volo is going to challenge us in this um, cave area that you find unknowns once you catch all of them. Probably should mention that. Also, they talk about space-time distortions. We will only see them if we're slow. Hopefully, we're not that slow. So here we want to run here, grab this bug wall because we definitely want to create more. And then with our Shinx, we're going to challenge our opponent's Togepi. Opponent's toge level 22 Togepi. Our level 3 Shinx has got this, right? You think? Basically, uh, she. So basically, this is Warden Ka Kalaba. There we go. Didn't say her name. And basically, she's not impressed with us. We're like the child that falls from the sky, and she's definitely not impressed with us. She's basically just kind of like stingy, and, and kind of like stingy, doesn't really trust anyone. Mainly because, if you've noticed, 
the tap a part of a stone tablet has kind of been uh, stolen, and she's not happy about that. So Volo is going to ask us after the after we lose to him to uh, um, get to uh, get the tablet back, and which we will get the tablet back, but we're going to take a nap. So can we see draining? Oh wait, oh wait, I forgot. Togepi is so slow that we always move. That we will always move first. Even level three Shinx outspeeds a level twenty-two Togepi because Togepi is so slow. So we now throw this fight. Oh hey, nice gold by me. And now. We're going to do what we now do. So we're going. So we're going to task to get the stone back, which we will. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sleep. We're going to basically be like any normal gamer and sleep throughout the entire day and wake up at night. Yes, I'm calling everyone out here. Before we do that, we want to craft max amount of heavy balls and max amount of stealth sprays. And now we're going to be using our first stealth spray. So here we have four because we're going to need to use all four. We're going to use all four. Of, oh, I for, almost forgot. We need my party. That's the wrong button. Want to see my Pokemon? And I want to basically put this back, but we want to keep two empty spaces open. So the first thing we're going to do, and it's foggy, so it might be more difficult for me to see, unfortunately. So we want to run behind it. Ghastly, do Ghastly does have the ability for some reason to cheat and look around just as I'm about to catch them. This Ghastly's now gone and it's right here. So we kind of just run towards the back of the Ghastly. Unfortunately, did I not catch any of the... I caught one, so I have to kind of run around them a little bit. That's fine. As long as you don't... Notice me. That's fine. How many stuns do we have? Uh, this Ghastly's kind of putting me in an awkward position because now I have to run to that Ghastly over there. And hopefully it doesn't notice me. There we go. That should do it. Hopefully. I'm also going to do while I'm here, may as well, is I'm going to also do Psyduck Sense and uh, Psyduck, Psyduck tasks and Luxio tasks. Oh yeah, I forgot. Welcome to the worst weather effect in the entire game. Fog makes all of your moves have a higher chance to miss. Worst weather effect in the game. They bought it back from Gen 4. And I don't think anyone is happy about that. Oh, hello. Hello, Pikachu. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. That's fine. Uh, where is Party? I need the Ravian lead. Ooh, level 19 is not that great. I did try to catch that Pikachu. Unfortunately, I wasn't quite able to. Pikachu wouldn't, isn't something that we're planning to complete, but it is some bonuses that we'd like to see. So here is the three bandits. If you can guess what the three characters that they're trying to be based off, then uh, have give yourself a cookie. But yeah, unfortunately, so here's the thing. It is foggy right now, which is annoying because, you know, moves have a chance to miss. That also means the opponent's move has a chance to miss. So maybe we get the ideal situation where it misses Venoshock. Oh, I'm faster. That also works too. No, it doesn't miss Venoshock. But we don't die, so that's the important thing. Okay, okay, I'll give uh, that you that. Uh, Charm is definitely based off two characters. But, of course, you have to know what the characters are. So one of the most important things I need to make sure is that my Cascoon is level 20. That is very important. If Cascoon is not level, 
well, Dust Talks has to be level 20. Because we are going to be attempting to, to complete 240 points, 220 points tasks at what in one turn. And those two is using a strong move and poison pounder. So yes, unfortunately that Pikachu is still aggro on me, so I have to run a bit back. And we now go warp back. And we now change to morning. So now we're resting at night. We're keeping the stone tablet, taking a nap, and then giving it back the next day. And it's raining, which isn't bad, which is okay. So here, we're doing the next Pokemon task, which is Badoo. Which we want to feed three and catch at least two of them. Preferably all three of them stay, though. Let's see. Ooh, Geodude pops out. That's actually really good to see. Although, not at this moment in time, because I'm trying to catch something else. Please? Uh, I guess that's kind of awkward. So, see if I can catch this Badoo. And then feed that one to get three. Oh, we oh, get four. That's fine. That's fine. We got enough points here anyway. And we are now going to finish Psyduck by fighting it. So now this fixes my Luxio mistake. And also finishes Psyduck. So we've now fixed all of our problems. Oh, I forgot to evolve my Cascoon, didn't I? Oops. Um, That's not good. Um, oop. Uh, uh, that's unfortunate. I forgot to evolve my Cascoon at night. So, I'm going to have to fix that problem in a different way. Luckily, there is a way I can fix this problem later on. One of the things I forgot to do is uh, switch uh, evolve Cascoon at night. Because then I get the dust tops points at night, which is kind of important. But luckily... I know ways to fix that problem. So that's un that's unfortunate on me on my end, not for not paying attention. So we'll evolve it during the day, and I'll fix that problem Pokemon in a moment. So catch seeing a Geodude uh, leap out. Come on, you can get up there. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. We also hope to see a Graveler at some point leap out. But that that will be a, at a different point. So I know I'm kind of struggling trying to keep everything in my head but and trying to save things. But yeah, I have a way to fix Dust Tox later. <laughs> but at least this finishes Cascoon and starts Dust Tox. The reason why we need to do dust talks is so that then we can also change the moves and give it poison powder over poison over its first move. And then now that we activate the stealth spray, our goal is to try and catch as many cricketoons, at least, you know, enough. Oh, we don't have enough space on our satchel. Uh, I'm going to discard this and discard this. Unfortunately, we're not getting any decent luck with Cricketunes. Oh, we're not getting any good luck with Cricketunes. That's unfortunate. So we're hoping that at least some of them stay in. But luckily, we have ways around this problem. The first way is the raspberries that we collected. They work similar to uh, Let's Go Raspberries where they do increase the chances of catching. So hopefully that works out, which it does. And hopefully this Pokemon stays in as well. That's unfortunate, but I'm pretty sure Cricketune should be complete with just one, I hope. We want to... Make sure that none of these Pokemon see me. 
which they don't. So next up is Pachirisu. So Pachirisu is a pretty simple one to complete. All you have to do is feed feed four times. And since there's so many Pachirisus that you can just throw around, this task is actually relatively fast to do. Despite the fact being kind of out of our way. So we're going to check if this Pachirisu stays in, which it does, and now it can leave. So now we come here, we want to break this because that gives us some iron chunks, which is really good. This is this tree, we want to get some more hot berries for later. We want to grab this. We also want to grab this. And we also want to start catching these two Pokemon for and complete them later. Here we again use our third instance of Stealth Spray. And the first check to see is that's a Graveler, which we want. And then we want to start feeding Pokemon. Unfortunately, that Graveler kind of went out. So I want to give the Graveler one chance. And no, we just have to run away from it. So here's Hippo. Hippo can be kind of annoying a little bit. Because they can sometimes randomly aggro against you. Hopefully these Hippos are being nice today. And they are. Well, that one isn't. Hopefully that one stays in. Which it does. So now we just need to make sure that we feed it six more times, uh, up to six times. Four, uh, four, five. Is that going to be six over there? Yes, it is. So now we can lead Dustox and do the Ursaluna fight. And the reason why we have the barrel still on our team. So yeah, Hippo is actually can be really annoying because it can just randomly aggro at you sometimes. Just checking my Pokemon counter. I'm pretty sure I caught a Yanma. As long as a Yanma stays in my party. As long as a, no, a Yanma is caught, then we should be fine for later on. So here, because our Dustox is now level 20, we can now just go ahead and strong poison powder. This will make Ursa Luna a lot faster to do because poison actually ticks off a good chunk of health. Unfortunately, we don't die here, which is un not ideal. So we just here cut confusion just to do some extra chip damage. The, the, the crit's actually kind of slow and didn't really do that much. Dustox then fades, and now it's time for the barrel sh time to shine. The one fight that we actually use the barrel. As we click Water Pulse. If we don't have a barrel here, we would have used... Um, we would have used uh, Psyduck instead. So, in terms of the Oshawa and Cyndaquil route, here's where they kind of converge and become normal. So, from this point onwards, Oshawa and Duat kind of become uh normal so normalize and kind of just meet up together so this will be the so yeah the fight you do in duo is kind of similar to the fight that we do in cricketoon where we would poison the 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 ursa luna first and then we would use agile aqua jet into strong aqua jet and that would finish ursa luna and that would finish duo and then we would deposit it from our party So now that this is finally complete and we can then, we, we were told to go back and tell our commander, we're not quite done yet. We're going to continue moving on. And we are going to start cat. We're going to do some other Pokemon catches before we leave. The first one is actually going to be Geodude and Graveler. Now we've seen a Geodude come out. 
So we don't actually need to catch six Geodudes. We only need to catch three. But however, for Graveler, we want to catch two. So we caught one Graveler, which is nice to see. Unfortunately, that Graveler saw me, which is kind of annoying. And so did that one. Here we want to catch three Geodudes, so we caught one Geodude. That Graveler saw me again, which is fine. Apparently, it can hear weird ear for some reason, which is kind of a weird thing. So, this is kind of a weird thing. So, that should be my third Geodude. And this should be my third Graveler. So, that's three Geodudes. Geodude will be done once it evolves. I'm going to try one more time to catch this one. And if not, it's fine. There is another place I can finish Graveler. Nope. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay, we can leave. We're leaving. We're leaving. It's fine. There are many ways that we can finish both Geodude and Graveler. So it's fine if that happens. So we want to grab this because we need some more stuff later. And then here for for Teddy for Teddy's, we're gonna feed one and then attempt to catch two. So we fed one. We caught one, but we're waiting for this one to stay in. And it does. Nice. So now we can return back. And we're going to do some party management a little bit. If I press the right button, of course. Where we are going to switch out the barrel for both teddies. Unfortunately, both of my teddies are extremely low level. Wow, we got unlucky on the levels for teddies. So, right now, in terms of research points, the only thing I'm going to check is have I done Cricket Tune? Because Cricket Tune is kind of in a awkward spot, I think. But aside from that, we should have 21 Pokemon effectively complete. Well, not 21, less than that, but a good chunk of Pokemon effectively complete at this point. But not all of it, nope. The only thing I'm going to check is whether or not I finish Cricketune. If not, I'm going to have to consider it as a bonus Pokemon instead. Unfortunately, no, I'm on level 7, so I'm going to have to consider it as a bonus Pokemon instead, instead of a Pokemon that I've completed. And I click the wrong button. It's because we were kind of unlucky with catching some of the Cricketunes earlier on and we were only able to catch one which has also meant that my gasties level were kind of low so while it is while we are again back into another awkward part it's not that bad also we're going to talk to S S S S Celine, Celine here so we can get a rank because rank does affect our rewards and we kind of need a little bit more money to get more stealth sprays and more stuff as well. We also have the ability to craft great balls, which will be very useful in the next area, not here. While we could craft great balls here, we don't really need it. The 11 Pokeballs that we have is enough for the rest of this area. So being 3,000-ish is pretty is actually pretty good for this point in the for this point in the game. Ideally, we would like to have Geodudes evolve as well at some point, but unfortunately, my Ghastly levels are a bit too low. The Ghastlies need to be level 25 before they can evolve. So, and not to mention, we got two level 26 Teddies, which is um, not ideal, but not the worst thing. Actually, no, they're the the lowest level they can be. So. We got unlucky for Teddies as well, by having only two 26s. Huh, oh, Max Report of Ghastly, that's funny. Unfortunately, we don't need that. 
I don't even know what that mass report is, but I'm not even going to figure out where that is. We are just going to go. On our way, we're going to catch this caster fern because we're going to be crafting something else later. And also this caster fern. We're going to be crafting something very loud. But we'll get to that later. If I can get up, please. Thank you. So next up is Tangler Tasks. Tangler is one of those Pokemon that we will complete over the course of the run and not necessarily complete right now. So ideally, all three of them just stay in the balls. One stays. Two... Is this one going to stay? That one stays and... That one stays. Tangler is being cooperative today. So that's really nice to see from Tangler. And now, so basically for this whole thing, Arezu was trying to fix Lilligant's uh, fury by herself. And well, in doing so, she accidentally sprained her ankle. And so now we're going to basically fix her problem for her. Oh, sorry, not Arezu, his Syrian Mars. That, that's the correct terminology we need to use. So... So now we're gonna go basically fight Lil effectively just fight a giant, uh, fight the new version of Lilligant in this game. Which you know, is very fun where... If you've seen the Cleavor fight, it's basically the exact same thing again. Just different attack patterns. And actually, I could potentially finish Cricketoon right here if I'm good enough. Or lucky enough. So hopefully, this Cricketoon potentially cooperates with me. I don't think that finishes Cricketoon yet, though. Maybe if I see another one, it might finish it. So around right now, Cricketoon's rank 9, so that'll be interesting. But anyway, here comes the other Pokemon that we're going to finish, and one of the interest, one of the most annoying parts about this run being stun items. Or rather, the lack of stun items sometimes. So, here comes Raihorn. So stun items are completely random, and unlike the other items, you can't buy them. Oh wait, we need to check if it stays in. Oh, it does. Okay, good. So now we want to head this way. There's a pseudo wooda which we're not catching because it's kind of useless. Don't really need the pseudo wooda So here we're gonna grab these bushes, which allows us to replenish on stun items, which is really, which can be really useful if um, for a certain Pokemon later on that requires a lot of stuns. There's Stuns are kind of a rare resource in this game. You don't really, you want to see a lot of them, but you don't really get a ton of them. Stuns come from trees and bushes, but they are at a rate of 30% from bushes and 5% from trees. They also can come from Pokemon, but it's unlikely that they do. Like it's very rare. Anyway, here's the Lilligan fight. It's my least favorite fight, but mainly because I'm just kind of bad. So basically, the general plan for doing Lilligan fast is effectively just running up to its face, throwing as many bo many bombs at it, and then in the air you want to attempt to throw one when she when Lilligan is in the air. So you continue throwing at this, continue throwing. It will then jump. Throw and then dodge. Throw then dodge. And so if you're good at throwing in both aspects, this fight can be done pretty fast. So we want to go back a little bit so we can try and get some hits, some extra hits. But wasn't quite able to get too many.
And this is actually not a bad fight. I was able to show off pretty the fight pretty well. Overall, not too bad. Yeah. So yeah, this fight, it can be pretty fun, but it's also not that fun. Also, I'm slow. I'm really slow in, the, in this area for this rod. I can tell that I'm slow because it's sunset. Normally, it wouldn't be sunset, but unfortunately, due to some funky shenanigans, it is now sunset. Unfortunately, none of my parties except Ghastly can evolve yet, but it's fine. So, I want to say that this run's luck has been kind of interesting. So, 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 so far. In terms of stun items, which is one of the rarest resources you can get in this game, because you can't straight up buy them. Uh, I'm actually doing, and they're not consistent. I'm pretty, doing pretty good. I caught the alpha barrel by accident. Uh, but in terms of other things, things that kind of matter, uh, not so well. So now, before we now before we leave this area, we're going to do the exact same thing again in the last area where we're just going to have a lone Shinx in our party. Before we do that, I'm actually going to go into my inventory and deposit any items that I don't need. I, I need that. Oops. That I don't need. So basically, cra all crafting materials and just other and potions as well, and then also the citrus berry as well. And then we're going to go into the, basically the Pokemon PC, please. And basically do the exact same thing again, where we are going to grab the Shinx, put it here, and then grab the multi-select and put all these Pokemon here. And then we're going to talk to the professor so we can leave. Cricketune's unfortunately not. Actually, it could be finished if I get two different genders. So I'm going to check Cricketune's finished. It's not. It's stuck at level 9 forever. Which is a shame, but it's fine. So, so far, out of the 39 Pokemon I am planning to complete, I have so far completed... 23, 22, 21, 20, 18, 17, 16, 15. 15 of the 39 Pokemon, so... We're more of a third of the way done in terms of catching Pokemon, catching and completing Pokemon. So before we go up to Commander, we're actually going to do another shopping, another shopping trip where we're going to be getting ourselves. So we currently have eight. I want to buy two more of these. And we basically, I want to buy 24 of these. And I want to buy 20 more, 20 more berries. This is going to be our second to last shopping trip, hopefully. In terms of resources, this is one of the few games that doesn't actually... It does technically have X items in a way of... Um, of uh, I don't forgot what the item is called, but due to how fights work in this game, we don't sweep with a Pokemon. We, sweep with, we kind of just use an entire team to deal with our fights because of how fights work in this game. I I'll explain fights more when there's more than one Pokemon. It definitely happens more in the late game, where fights become more important. But here, but yes, yeah, it's called Ox Powers. You don't ever use them because how this game works in terms of fights, you use an entire, t you want to use an entire, t you want to use an entire team because you can't just sweep with one Pokemon because of how uh, turns work in this game. This also means that this also means that the level, not the level, but the stats of a Pokemon theoretically don't matter. So, unlike other Pokemon games where you need to reset reset at the starter if you don't get the right starter, this game you don't. You don't need to reset on Pokemon because here's a fun thing about the damage calculation in this game. Stats don't matter. Level does. In the damage calculation, for some reason, next to the level, there's a times three multiplier when it comes to damage. So, so I don't know exactly the true math, but effectively, in this game, 
a Pokemon who is one level higher, like, let's take an example, Luxray with a decent attack at a higher level does more damage than a Luxray who's lower level but has a higher attack stat. Level always kind of mattered. Even if a even the Luxray that's lower level that has a higher attack stat, level matters way. Level is actually way more important in this game than um, than um, um, than uh, level matters way more important in this game than anything else. Oh yeah, this entire th this oh by the way, this entire thing is mission nine, where you go meet people in Prelude Beach. It's like one of the weirdest missions where you're just given this exposition where if Pokemon become evil, I must do if Pokemon become evil and killing machines, I must do what I must. And, you know, protect the town and ban Pokemon from this place. Which, you know, would be sad. It's not like it's foreshadowing anything. Uh, it might be foreshadowing. Anyway, we are now about to enter the third island. Or, not the third island, the third area. Where they explain to us that this area doesn't have any noble Pokemon. Or any noble frenzy Pokemon. Right? Because apparently the Pokemon uh, di uh, died in, in the water that it kind of lives around with. I mean, if you expect a four... I mean, to be fair... It's a four times po it's a Pokemon that's weak to water by X4. Yeah, I could see why it would die <laughs> from just being in the water. Although this is also the universe where Rhyhorn can surf on water, so I don't know. But yes. Also, you may have noticed why I deposited all my items. This is because this guy gives you two items. Useless items, by the way, but still two items. And the reason why we want to deposit is so that there's a so we can skip a text box saying, "Oh, this item now went to your storage because you don't have enough space in your satchel." So that's why we do that. So now we move on to the third area, known as Cobalt Coastlands, where things start to get a little bit hectic. I would say. In my uh, personal opinion, but also where things start to get a lot more fun because if you, this is like I would consider it to be the most fun area because if you can do this area optimally, oh, it feels so good doing it. It actually feels really good doing it. But unfortunately, doing this area it optimally is very difficult to do. It does rely a little bit on luck, but overall, it should honestly be fine. Anyway. Time for time to throw the next fight. Time to throw the next fight. So this is Irida 2. You couldn't you couldn't lose the first Irida fight, but you can lose the second one. And besides, this is even the fight that she just doesn't really want to fight. Hey, do you want to fight? I'm kind of chill here. I just want to, you know, just fight just because. She's not even in the mood to fight. But this is the first instance of uh, other characters cheating. Other characters cheating, because guess what? This isn't a 1v1. This is a 2v1. Yeah. She not only has a Glaceon, which is her main, you know, fair enough, Sinnoh. She also has... She also has an Eevee that's just there. Also, we get the optimal fight being we lose in turn 1. Nice. That's what I like to see. Now it's time to do a huge chunk of Pokemon, which is going to be really, really fun. Thanks, let's go, people. <laughs> Thank you for sending me the, your regards. So, yeah. This is where I would love to see if I can do this 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 entire area op optimally. So the first thing we're going to do is use the power of teleportation to warp back. Second thing we're going to do is we are going to grab our Pokemon from our from our from our 
not PC, but uh, Yard, I think it's called. Then, we're going to do our hopefully final shopping trip, where we buy 30 Pokeballs. Then we're going to craft, uh, how many, F 15 Grape Balls, Max Amount of Stealth Spray, and we'll craft this later. And now, we want to check just in case nothing's in our bag. No, it isn't. No, it's not. It's not in our item storage. And now, we go ahead and start doing our Pokemon. So the first, so you notice that we have two empty slots in our party. And that is on purpose. We are going to be catching Machop. Now, Machop's tasks are pretty simple. We are going to be evolving two Machop. Evolving two Machops. We're going to be stunning two and catching two. So I'm going to get my stun items ready. So here's my chop number one. And we're going to heavy ball it to the back so it's more consistent getting in. And here's the second one. Unfortunately, that my chop kind of broke out, but it's fine. We can just catch these ones. Hopefully they both, one of them stays. Nice. Now we're going to go to the beach and we're going to grab these pop pods. You'll see why later. And we're also going to grab this iron chunk as well while we're here. We have caught a heavy one. Nice. And then just before we come up here, we are going to activate our stealth spray. One of ten. We're going to go behind this butter butterfly and we're going to great ball it. Hopefully that catches. It doesn't. That's fine. We have more butterfly later. We want to catch. We want to catch a butterfly before we leave this area. Our next step is going to be feeding this Growlithe. We're going to be feeding Growlithe now. So we just went and did my chop. Now we're going to start and finish Growlithe's. So who's a fan of Growlithe here? And who's a fan of a new history in Growlithe? Because we're going to be feeding these good boys. And hopefully, they stay in. Uh, that doesn't look good. Nope, that does not stay in. Uh, please be kind. Please, you stay in, please? Nice. So now we can start moving on. I'm also checking to see whether or not there's any shaking tubble stone. You'll see why in a moment. You will see why in a moment. And I'm actually going to activate my second stealth spray now. Because I still need to catch a butterfly. Normally I wouldn't have to, but since I still need to catch a butterfly, there's one right here. If I can just catch it, please. And be out of here. I'm also checking for Vulpix. Which there is. Unfortunately... That butterfly didn't stay in. So I'm going to have to try that again. Hopefully it stays in. This time. Nice. So now that completes uh, Butterfly. And now what we're doing is we're going to be feeding these Glamiels and Vulpix at the same time. Vulpix is actually an RNG encounter and the fact that we managed to get it is pretty nice. Do you notice that? No, you don't. Nice. So... One more, one more feed on the Vulpix, and that's done. Glad Meow is also done, so we can actually throw one at the back. You're done. Is Vulpix done? Nice. So now we finish both Glad Meow and Vulpix here. So, now that we're able to do that... We now get to talk to nice Thunderstone, by the way. <laughs> one nice one percent Thunderstone. That means I can mark off my Chop, Growlithe, Glamiel, and Vulpix. And we now get to tell the story of the lost the lost Arcanine. Who unfortunately uh died while saving their children. So let's pay respects to the Arcanine. Yeah, it's a yeah, you know, Pokemon has a sad story. Sometimes.
And apparently we're heading to Firespit Island because apparently some people have been seeing ghosts of it. So, it's a ghost story. We all love ghost stories, don't we? Anyway, now that we've done here, we're now going to then be moving left. Moving towards the left. Towards the left. So we just did the right, the left side of the island. Now we're going to be heading over to the right side of the island because we need to talk to somebody in order to get a fish to uh, respond to us. So now, the teddies are almost ready to evolve the Machops. Well, at least I got one high level Machop. Otherwise, that would be kind of annoying. So next up is Sfeel. Who loves Sfeels? We're going to be treating them nicely today because we are going to be feeding six of them. Well, we're going to be feeding them six times. So... So that feels kind of going wherever it wants to go. Gonna eat? Okay. How many have I eaten? Four, five, one more? Yeah, good. So, we're gonna head here, we're gonna grab this pop pod here. This pop pod here. Yeah, and unfortunately, Sfeel's time is now up. We're gonna have this one here and this one here. And we're also gonna grab that pop pod before we make it towards Iskin's house. And this, hopefully, is a Graveler. No, it's a Geodude, that's unfortunate. I'm hoping for a Graveler to pop out, but it's fine. That way we don't have to catch any more, because I still have to catch a Graveler to kind of finish it. So wait for the Apom to catch, and the Apom did catch. Nice. Ah, I love the Sphere emotes. So yeah. Seal has now just been completed. I did catch an Apom because we may choose to complete it. Hold on, now I'm going to do some math. 30, 31, 33, 34, 35, 36. Uh, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. Well, we don't actually need to complete Apom, actually, if we... Hold on, let me check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plus nine is twenty-nine. I can all I have to do is complete one optional. Which is actually not that bad, but I am gonna be playing it a little safe here, just so that we can actually finish a run. Instead of not finish a run. So yeah, basically, he said that we can get the Basque Legion, but only if we get make his food, which we require a dust crops. To use Dark Pulse. Specifically Dust Crops for some reason. So. We're going to wait to make it fourth turn night. So that we can catch his Dust Crops. However, not before that I fix a couple. Not before we do some cool stuff. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of just run this way. Go down here and kind of abuse the geometry a little bit. So that we can actually climb up here. That was weird, but that worked. We're going to run up above this cliff right here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, before we go down, use Stealth Spray. I'm going to also evolve this Machop right now so that we don't have to evolve it later. Well, for math and sake, yes, finishing a run is more optimal than not finishing a run, but... Get yeah, our first Machoke, and then we are also going to our key items, and we're going to craft a new item, Scatterbangs. So, we'll get to wh why we use Scatterbangs in just a moment, but first... We want both of them to stay, technically. Nice. So we finished, so we fixed the Dust Ox mistake that I had to do, and now... Time for the use of Scatterbangs. Which is right here. 
Unfortunately, that Dustclops did see me by accident, but it's fine. Because we can just... Do that. So now our goal is to now scare off... Dusk... Basically, Dusk... Dusk... No, dusk... Uh, dusk Skull. That's what it is. With Scatterbangs. So we need to scare it off five more... At least four times. So we're waiting for the thing to pop away. And then... We catch that. Hopefully it stays in, which it does. And now it's time for the Dust Cops fight. Well, Dust Cops fight in quotation marks, because all we're doing is just making the Dust Cops catching a little easier by actually choosing to fight it. Uh, the reason why is because we used to just Raspberry it, but unfortunately that's inconsistent. So we're going for more consistency. Which we love. Nice. So we want to grab this, and then we will walk back. So here we can't evolve anything else, but that's fine. So we're going to do some party management. Where we actually want to... Put both Ghastlies in and evolve them. This now finishes... So now this now finishes gas... This not only finishes Ghastlies, but just by evolving two Ghastlies, it also completely finishes Haunter. So that's really nice to see. And then, of course, we have the second Ghastly, which we need to evolve. And then I'm going, I don't think we catch any more Pokemon as we run to Isken. So because of that, I'm going to prepare for Isken already. By, actually no, we might catch some more Pokemon. Uh, I'm going to put both Geodudes in just, just, just to see. Uh, you're 21. Do you have a higher level? 23, I'll take that. So, I'm basically going to be attempting to catch anything I see in sight that I don't have. So, I'm going to be attempting to catch these Drift Blooms, but they're not important if they don't stay in. Catching them does get me a, a huge amount of EXP, which I managed to catch both, which is really nice to see. I managed to catch two by accident, which is fun. Love being able to catch Pokemon by accident. So, none of the Pokemon is still re ready to evolve. Here it is. Unfortunately. So, we're going to have to put it back into our... Unfortunately, we're going to have to uh, put it back into our party. Uh, we will try and catch Drift, Flim Drift Floons. May, but I cannot guarantee that. It's not something that we complete, unfortunately, because it's kind of slow. So... We still need to evolve our Geodude, so we're kind of still in a picky spot with our Evos. Because aside from the Machoke, nothing else evolved, which is kind of annoying. Actually, so I have to deposit one thing for my party. Uh, and I'm going to move this here. And then we'll see what we can do to fix things. So, run and valid, not completing Drift Fluence. Drift Fluence is, we used to, but it's kind of not worth the reward. It's kind of just not worth it anymore. It's kind of, I was like, I hate to say it, but it's kind of not worth it anymore to finish Drift Loons. It's slow. It doesn't, it's not really that worth, that worth. Anyway, 
we are about to go into the into my biggest contribution into this game. And that is Gastrodon. Great. I want a raise of ha I want a raise of hands or something if people like Gastrodon in chat. Because well, Gastrodon is my biggest contribution. Uh, Gastrodon is really, really good. Its typing is really, really good for late game. Because, here's a fun fact, grass types don't exist. I mean, they do, but they don't. So effectively, Gastrodon, for effectively the entire late game, has no weakness. Which is amazing. But unfortunately, Gastrodon is a. Uh, so yeah, Gastrodon is kind of slow, unfortunately. Well, not slow to get, but just slow in general. So most of the time it does move second. But that kind of makes up for it. And also, Shallows is actually not a bad task to complete. So, remember the three bandits that we saw quite some time ago? Well, here they are again, and they're gonna steal a- and they're gonna steal a Growlithe, because they want it to evolve. But here's the thing. They steal the wrong one! <laughs> so, oops. Oops for that one. So yeah, oops, oopsie daisy for that Pokemon, unfortunately. Gra they steal the wrong Growlithe, and now we are gonna have to, uh, you know, go rescue it. With our help of our new fish friend. However, before that, we are gonna have to, uh, do some stuff. Which is... Do some stuff, which is catch some other Pokemon while we're here. So unfortunately, Iskan is kind of a, a coward. Because he doesn't like sending his own Pokemon to fight. So he so they're asking us to save him. Save the Arcanine. And which is exactly what we're going to do. Ah. Of course it did. Alright, so now here comes a little bit of a break. Get to stretch your arms, stretch your legs. For the next two seconds, for the next 20 seconds, we're just, you know, surfing on a giant fish. You know, taking a bit of a re relaxation before we start using a stealth spray and catching the next Pokemon. So now here we go to everyday items and we go ahead and use this. I'm also going to discard the Thunderstone, discard these plump berries, and discard the mushrooms. Because I need more space in my satchels. I'm also going to discard this. So here we go to berries and we start feeding the shallows. Oh, that Remoraid decided to hate me. Uh, 31, that's not... I don't want a 31. You are also a 31. Ugh, I don't want 31s. You are a... Are you all 31? Uh, you're 32. I guess I'm gonna take you instead. That's really low. These are really low-level shallows. So... Two of them have to stay in, you didn't, so stay in the ball. I also forgot this box, this box is very important. Okay, good, we can leave. Uh, unfortunately we don't get any cakes, we were kind of hoping to get a cake. But it's fine. Uh, am I doing this? Yes I am. So, next up is kind of an annoying Pokemon to do. And that is Finneon. 
So, we activate another Stealth Spray. And we're going to start to catch Finneons. Finneons can be kind of annoying to catch because they're not always out in the water. So, hope maybe. No. Oop. Okay, we're going to catch this one first. So, hopefully Finneons become fine. That one broke out. Unfortunately, that Drift Loon decides to... You're really not staying in, are you? Wow. Finneons are not being my friend today. That Finneon literally refused to stay. All my Finneons are breaking out. I'm going to have to ditch it, aren't I? I need to keep this Great Ball, so... Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to ditch Finneon. We're going to have to use one more Stealth Spray because we still need to catch one more uh, Graveler. Luckily, there are plenty of Gravelers that spawn in this area, but we basically need to make sure that we don't get seen by one. So we're going to activate another Stealth Spray. Uh, we need this to evolve, so... Uh, do that, and then use my final Great Ball on this. Nice! That's really nice to see. So now, we're going to be spending the next minute evolving everything. So, <laughs> we have a minute of donations. That would be great. If not, that's fine. Hi, my Discord froze, and also, I'm not the person you're expecting. Oh, definitely, that's a, that's a very dramatic voice change. Yeah, this I'm doing. This is Star doing uh, his best May impression and talking in the third person. It's very cool. Uh, Face by Fearos benefits the Able Gamers Foundation, which whose mission is to create opportunities that enable play in order to combat social isolation, foster inclusive communities, and improve the life of people with disabilities. People with disabilities are at a heightened risk of social isolation. However, Able Gamers knows that video games can be the perfect gateway to community participation, lifelong friendships, and unforgettable shared experiences. That's why it's crucial to ensure these experiences are developed with an accessibility as a priority and inclusion as the goal. For over a decade and a half, Able Gamers has been pushing the inclusive efforts of the industry towards forward by training and consulting studios while connecting them directly with players who can share their personal experiences. So if that sounds good to you, you can donate with exclamation point donate in the chat or by going to psrdiversity.com slash donate. And with that starts the three bandit fights. So the bandits are pretty simple are pretty simple in terms of concept. The first one decides the genius idea. You'll know that that is not a great idea, but fortunately for our good friend Clover, uh, we don't have any fire moves. But luckily, we don't need fire moves. Because of a weird thing in this game, with four times effectiveness. Which is definitely explained better later, but for that, hopefully this Machoke survives an energy ball, which it does. Here, we're just going to strong bullet punch, because we want points, and that finishes Machoke now. Our stealth spray wore off, and that's fine. And then we bring in Staravia, which now...